Around Halloween, I have a seance to convene with the ghosts of web dev news like Adobe Flash and Microsoft Zoom and Google. Just freaking everything. This week, GitHub had its big developer conference, GitHub Universe, which ranks below the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but still above DC. Now you'll never believe what GitHub's big announcement was, it's agents. They made agents. Everyone's making agents, they made agents. Every single announcement was AI agents. GitHub announced Agent HQ, a new system that integrates AI coding agents directly into GitHub, VS Code, and mobile. GitHub is gonna let you combine LLMs from Anthropic, Google, OpenAI, and XAI as part of a single Copilot subscription. It's like Voltron, but without the robots and the excitement. The most obvious platform change is the big dashboard revamp. It used to have a big Facebook-style newsfeed in the middle of it. Now it's your AI agent mission control. You've got an LLM chat box front and center. Underneath, they show you your agent activity. Mission control lets you assign tasks to different agents, track their progress, and manage permissions across GitHub, VS Code, and even your terminal. Now, no matter where I am, I can launch a fleet of AI therapists to attack my insecurities from different angles. Cursor recently released a plan mode, and now VS Code has one too. Copilot asks clarifying questions, creates a structured plan, and then executes it when approved. Mike Tyson said everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth, a feature AI still doesn't have. They've also added an MCP registry right alongside the extensions in VS Code. It allows you to easily install MCPs for tools like Stripe, Figma, and Sentry so agents can work with external APIs. There's even a Notion MCP so that Claude can journal about his day. They also announced that TypeScript has surpassed Python and JavaScript to become the most used language on GitHub. That's because a strongly typed language helps catch bugs that LLMs would otherwise introduce. So if AI is a confident toddler, TypeScript is the baby gate keeping it away from the stairs. They also made a design change to their co-pilot character. Now that it's an agent, he has like a little star in his eye? Whose idea was it to give the little AI robot the Terminator eye, huh? I'll need your code, your root, and your model context protocol. <laughs> I still haven't forgiven them for inspiring Labubu, but now they're playing fast and loose with the Terminator apocalypse? Not cool. A new study suggests that large language models can suffer from the same kind of brain rot that humans get from consuming junk content. Researchers trained LLMs like Llama on social media style content. Some got posts that were less popular but thoughtful and well-written. Others got short viral posts and I'm guessing minion coffee memes. If you have an uncle who spends way too much time on Facebook, you already know the results. The models trained on viral junk showed significant declines in reasoning, memory, safety alignment, and even became more narcissistic and less agreeable. Even retraining on good data didn't fully fix the damage. Same thing happened with my uncle Ted. Taking him to the library helped, but he'll always be suspicious of the moon landings. Vtest 4 just dropped and browser mode is finally stable. Not to be confused with Bowser mode where your app is kidnapped and you need to go through eight castles to get it back. Browser mode allows developers to test components in a real browser environment. So yeah, it's finally time. You can rip out JS DOM, Happy DOM, and whatever other atrocities you've been using to simulate the browser in Vtest because now it actually runs in a real browser, giving you access to APIs like window events and local storage. Vtest can also perform visual regression testing using the new to match screenshot matcher. It can take screenshots of your website to ensure styling doesn't change. You'll know immediately if your small change is actually a big disaster. Vtest serves as the test runner and uses Playwright or WebDriver IO to interact with the browser. I hope you wrote all that down because there will be a V quiz on this later. But don't worry, this next section counts for extra credit thanks to Prismic, our sponsor. Prismic is a headless page builder that deeply integrates with Next.js, Nuxt, and SvelteKit. You create reusable page components and Prismic takes care of things like type generation and API connections. Plus Prismic's MCP server and other AI tools make development faster than ever. It's the best way to keep your content team moving quickly while keeping everything consistent and on brand. Pass the test by getting started at prismic.io and telling them a video sent you. 
Vercel just launched the Workflow Development Kit, an open source TypeScript framework that lets developers write durable async functions that can pause, survive crashes or redeploys, and resume exactly where they left off. So basically your code has object permanence, it's reached a toddler status. It basically handles retries, persistence, and orchestration for you, so you can build reliable systems like AI agents or data pipelines without managing state machines or queues. And the British are furious about this. Queues are a national pastime, but they're not the only ones upset. The implementation of this caught some critique within the ecosystem. Tanner Lindsley, the creator of the TAN stack, specifically took issue with the usage of directives for use workflow and use step. He argues that directives appear like standardized parts of JavaScript when they are actually bespoke APIs that lead to vendor lock-in. To some developers, the use of directives is elegant. To others, it looks like magic in the I can't tell what's happening kind of way. For me, it's one thing to have a directive at the top of the file, but once we start putting them all over functions, we might use too much. If you'd like to form your own opinion, you can try Workflow in Next.js and Nitro apps with support for SvelteKit, Nuxt, and others coming soon. There are two new web component libraries, and they both trace back to the same developer. He's out here building two UI libraries while the rest of us haven't even finished our personal websites. WebAwesome 3 just launched. It's the next evolution of Shoelace, which was originally created by Corey LaVisca, and is now maintained by the same team as Font Awesome. It's a full design system with over 50 components, layout patterns, built-in themes, and a browser-based theme builder. Meanwhile, Corey's personal project, Quiet UI, just went open source. It's smaller, more focused, and built around accessibility, simplicity, and longevity. It's his own creative space to experiment with web components two design systems, one developer's influence on both, and no more excuses for not trying web components. Now I have a new reason to start my portfolio from scratch for the fifth time. Advent of Code is back this December. It's the annual event where developers solve programming puzzles each day leading up to Christmas. It's like a holiday advent calendar where every day you're reminded that you're bad at code and you've always been bad at code and that your parents were right and you'll know. Oh, I solved it, nice. This year, creator Eric Wastel announced that there will be 12 puzzles instead of 25. The community feedback about this has been really positive, with many people saying that 25 was too much for them to keep up with, and that 12 is more manageable for everyone involved. Now by having half the puzzles, every other day you get to go outside. This has been The Callback. Please like and subscribe, and I will see you next week. I'm seeing, I'm seeing guest books and hit counters and geocities and... Damn it, it's Internet Explorer. All right, seance over. Nope, 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 nope. If you had AI agents on your bingo card, I hope that's all you had on your bingo card because that's all they announced.